Greetings from New Zealand. My name is Holly Thorpe and today I'll be presenting some of my work relating to girls empowerment through action sports for development and particularly the case of Skaterstan. So over the last decade a lot of my work has focused on action and formal sports such as skateboarding, surfing, snowboarding, parkour, climbing and particularly girls in, uh, participation in these sports. More recently I've focused on action sports for development and peace building initiatives and in 2014 I talked about the growth in these these types of programs around the world. More recently I've really focused on action sports for girls development in both the global north and the global south and we're seeing a growth in these types of programs with the idea that by offering girls opportunities to learn to skateboard or to surf or to snowboard in safe environments this is somehow going to be empowering for them and perhaps changing their lives. However, I am arguing that many of these types of organisations, the critiques of the girl effect that I'm sure many of you are aware of, also apply to some of these types of programmes. Many of them overemphasise girls' agency and potential while overlooking the structural changes that are required for any real social change in their lives uh, with privileged girls and women from the global north going to places in the global south and assuming that by giving them uh, surfing opportunities or skateboarding opportunities, this is somehow going to create real, sustainable, long-term change in these uh, these young women's lives. And as many of us know, it's much more complicated than that. However, I am seeing some some unique uh, programs and initiatives developing. Uh, one such example is Skaterstan in Afghanistan, developed in 2006. It's a, um, a multi-international award-winning organisation for their use of skateboarding and educational programs with displaced and urban youth in Afghanistan, also now with programs in Cambodia and South Africa. And there they have up to, or nearly 50% of girls participating in their programs, their two sites in Afghanistan. And I have been really interested in their unique types of strategies that they've been developing for girls empowerment in Afghanistan. So I'm just going to offer you a select few findings from my, my research, which has included interviews with various uh, international staff at Skaterstan and, and media analysis. So one of these is that the, the staff I've spoken to deeply believe in the potential of skateboarding as a non-competitive, informal activity that offers space for youth to, to express themselves, um, to participate and share the space, to demonstrate... Um, creativity and self-expression, um, but also as well as having this deep belief in the potential of skateboarding, they're also quite critically um, conscious and aware of the difficulties of creating real social change. And many of the staff that I spoke to actually have uh, studied, have degrees in international development and international politics, so they're very aware of the, the theories of the difficulties of, of creating social change. So Amy, a pseudonym here, she said, I think what Skaterstan does is really valuable, but it's not a quick fix. It has to be part of a much bigger puzzle. Another key finding from my, my work is that girls are never to be treated or represented as victims of, at Skaterstan, and this is part of their, their policy, and particularly in their, their media coverage and representation of their activities and of their participants. And their uh, skater stand is very prolific and very creative in using social media to represent what they're doing, to disseminate their, their work, to, to fundraise, to raise awareness, but they are very, very conscious to, to never represent their female participants or any of their participants as victims, and this is, this is quite important. I also have seen a quite deep level of cultural sensitivities in their work. The struggle, they are very, very aware of the cultural, the need to be culturally aware of, of developing girls' programs, sporting programs, educational programs in Afghanistan and the risks that poses to their participants and themselves. Um, and they're developing some quite unique strategies for, for overcoming some of those challenges, but respecting many of them. Ollie, the founder, talked about early marriage as being a, a real challenge for them but they have uh, tried to overcome that by offering quite highly paid positions for their local female instructors so that they can, can continue playing um, a valuable, critical role in their organisation. And their local female staff are highly valued, their voices, their experiences, their hopes and dreams for the Skaterstan and for um, what that organisation can offer youth. Um, this is a very valuable and key part of this programme. 
And the final point is that the feminist ethic that I see underpinning the work of the female staff at Skaterstan. The women that I've spoken to there are very aware of the ongoing feminist negotiations, everyday negotiations that they must challenge themselves and each other on their assumptions about gender and agency and empowerment and false binaries between the global north and south. They talk about the importance of non-hierarchical relationships between themselves and particularly the, the local um, participants and their local staff. And I also saw a real culture of support and friendship and collegiality across the female staff working in Afghanistan. So Lindsay Hayhurst, adopting a post-colonial feminist critique, has argued that we should be working together with girls and women in the two-thirds world to build transnational solidarity, respecting difference and using a more egalitarian language of alliances, coalitions and solidarity instead of salvation. And I would argue that we are seeing some of this type of work happening in action sports for development initiatives such as Skaterstan. So thank you very much for your time. I hope the rest of your day is, is a productive and enjoyable one, and I welcome any comments or questions via email. Thank you.